Okay, very nice. So as I mentioned, uh, we're now going into the review of last week. So we used emotional vocabulary, lots of synonyms to, I, to write on the Google Classroom stream. Now, when you go into Google Classroom, you can see the stream, that's our class. You can see the stream and you can see public comments. So remember, when it's on the Google Classroom stream, everything here is public, which means everybody can read it. Sometimes I'll give you something to read and to talk about publicly on a message board like this. And at the end of class today, at the end of class today, I'm going to give you your first assignment uh, to turn in. So here are uh, the comments people made using the vocabulary. And we have Chen used the word befuddled. Carmen used the word ex unexpectedly. Uh, Astrid used the word devastated. Um, let's see, what was another? Shocked. That was all about regarding the, oh, Maria, you, nice use of the word hopeless. Very good. So these are, this was the exercise we did with uh, synonyms, using synonyms and using a thesaurus. So given that we can all read this and you can, uh, everybody can share, that's the stream. Now, the other feature of Google Classroom is classwork. Now, if you look at your Google Classroom page and you notice classwork, you'll see I posted the first assignment, which I'm going to go over right now. So there it is. Brand new assignment, regional pizza in the United States. So this is what I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do this and also what it looks like as a student. So I'm in my teacher account right now. I'm going to switch from my teacher account to a student account that looks, so it looks just like your screen. Here we go. So when you open up your Google Classroom page, you will see, first you go up here to your Gmail. Then you go into what's called the waffle, these nine dots right there. And then when you click on all these options, you go down to your Google Classroom. You can also, if you have the app directly on your phone, you can do that. And then you'll see, oh, whoops, I forgot to add myself. Hold on a second. This is actually uh, going to help you, Lunique. So Lunique, I'm going to show, show what it looks like uh, when someone is added. So I'm going to add myself. Here we go. There it is. I created that account just to show everybody what it looks like as a student. So there it is. I'm adding myself to the page. I'm inviting myself. There we are. And you can see in my inbox, I have an invite. I join. Now I'm joining as a student. Okay, that's what your Google Classroom page looks like. And you have three options. So the first one is the stream. That's the public comments that everybody can read. The second one is your assignments that you turn in. And this is what this is practice for college after 6B. And this one is the people. So you can see when you click on people, you can message, you can email directly uh, your classmates. So when you go into your Google Classroom page, if you have the app open on your phone, you see the two teachers. There's myself, there's Michael, and I see everybody else. And if you don't see yourself added here, 
Um, the, um, this afternoon, Daniel, the volunteer, uh, can help you join the class. So, and uh, Lunique, hopefully by the end of today, you will be, uh, you will have joined here. So, yep, I see you, Fatima. You're definitely in. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> I just saw you double checking. So, when I go into class work, first thing I want to do is look at this. Who could tell me what that is? The date, the last day. The last right. day. You can do the due homework. date. The due date. Now, the due date is very. What is a due date? January twenty third. Well, what is a due date? Is the limit for you to make the do the homework? Exactly. Exactly. So um, after six A, there's level six B. And then there's college. You want to, one of the most important things you want to learn in college, which we stress all the time in the next level 6B, is follow the due dates of your assignments. Why? Because this is um, improve your responsibility. Well, yes. <clears throat> if you turn in an assignment late, what does it do to your grade? Mm -mm, no point. Right. It, it, each school will have a different policy about late assignments. Uh, more flexible schools will say, okay, we'll accept an assignment late, like a day late, uh, with, an excuse, with a valid excuse and minus five points, minus 10 points. Um, very strict schools, like when I was in graduate school, uh, I'd assign, I, had, I had professors who wouldn't let you turn in an assignment five minutes late. They were that strict. And it wasn't them, it was the rules of their school. So always be very mindful about the due dates of your assignments because you have to work on time management. If you see an assignment due next week, you have to plan. If you see an assignment due tomorrow, you have to plan. And this is a good exercise. This is why we use Google Classroom, because it's because uh, there's two paths for El Centro students who are members. Path one is college, and path two is workforce. readiness so every uh every time you come to class you're preparing for one of these two either college or workforce readiness and both of these will have due dates if you're training for a better job your uh, company will have a due date for a project you're working on if you if you're training for more uh education college will have due dates for everything that you have to get done to manage time. So that's what, that's uh, I'd say about 40% of what we do in the upper levels is time management. It's not just, it's not just uh, academic skills. You, you're not just practicing your English. You're, you're learning how to be students, learning how to be uh, more capable workers. So regional pizza in the US. I have a due date of January 23rd. What's the first thing I need to do, who could tell me? Do the homework, like. There you go, Carmen, perfect. I gotta do it, but how do I do it from here? <laughs> what do I need to do next? Tell me, guide my hands. Uh, teacher, yes, I have one question. Uh-huh. Uh, um, uh, I... Four items, New York style pizza, Chicago, Detroit. Wait, 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 Maria, you're already in there. Tell us, tell, you're telling us what's in the assignment right now. Tell oh, me, okay. Maria, tell, Maria's already, already opened the assignment. So, uh, Carmen or Maria, tell me what to do to open the assignment and, and read it. 
What do I need to do? Just click on that. There it is. Click, and then I see Watch. what to do. There it is. Follow the instructions on the worksheet attached and submit when you are finished. Okay. Okay. So that means I need to do what? What's next? Open the link. Open. Right, right, exactly. So let's take a look at this. When I click view assignment, then I see, aha, a Google document. And in that Google document, you'll see instructions. Mm -hmm. And this is add or create. If I wanna attach something separate, do I need to attach anything here? Uh, no. no, no, no. For this assignment, nothing needs to be attached. We're not even there yet. I gave it to you. Everybody's got the same blank worksheet. So nothing needs to be attached here. Uh -huh. And uh, right here, this is very important right here, private comments. And that's my name, George. So I assigned this and you can send me a private comment and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, Maria, you are just asking me, hey, what do you want? You had a question. You can actually do that privately. You can do it publicly like this, but if you don't want to ask in front of your classmates, you can do it like this. Uh, dear George, I am so confused. What do you want me to do? And then you press send and that'll go to me privately. So that's the difference between the stream and the uh, classwork. If you have a message just for the teacher only, you send the message in the comments just to the teacher. All right, so what's next? Uh, I think that was Maria or Carmen or anybody. What do I do next? How do I do this assignment? Teacher. Yeah. Please repeat it for me, please. Repeat wait, what? what you want <laughs> about the comment about oh sure 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 thank you no problem Astrid so does that uh Astrid do you see where it says private comments yes I do. right so right here you can write whatever you want mm -hmm. to me if you have a question for me and me alone mm -hmm. so Last week, we messaged each other on the stream, and that was public, meaning everyone can read it. But if you have a question just for the teacher and nobody else, private information that nobody else needs to know, then you send them, then you go into classwork where we are now. This is classwork and ask the question about the assignment. Does that make sense? Thank you. You're welcome. You're absolutely, you're, you're welcome. Um, okay, so who wants to guide me to the next step? What's next? Open the assignment. You got it. So now I got to open it and do it. There it is. So just a sentence. Who wants to read the instructions? No, we have to read the instruction. Exactly. So always read the instructions. And if you have a question for the teacher about the instructions, you can go back into the comments. George, I'm not sure what you mean by, or George, in the instructions you said, and this is how you would communicate directly to your teacher. Mm -hmm. So who would like to read the instructions here? I'm starting off simple, who can read for us? Me. Uh, I think Fatima's hand that was up first. Fatima, go for it. Okay, thank you. Using yeah. the link below, read about original types of pizza in the US and describe them in the complete sentence 30 to 50 words. Beautiful. All right. So these are the links. So if you look here, you have a link to one article. You have a link to another article. Some of the, a lot of these are, are food magazines, uh, food blogs, things like that. And a link to another article and a link to another article. 
So there's a lot, there's a lot, it looks simple, but there's a fair amount of reading uh, I'm asking you to do, but I'm gonna make it easier by putting you into four different groups and each of you will be assigned one article to read and discuss together for a few minutes to get a sense of what to do. So we have New York style pizza. We have Chicago style pizza. We have Detroit. We have Colorado, totally different styles of pizza all from the same country. Now, when you start reading, let's say I read right here, I open it up and I look, I see pictures, I read the, about the history, I discuss with my classmates. How do I begin to write on the document? I start typing right here. And then when I read about this next one, I type right here. How do I know how much to write? Keep it between 30 to 50 words, so a sentence or two. Now, let's say I'm looking at Colorado Mountain Pizza. Totally different from anything you'll ever see in Boston. Anybody ever see anything like this? Very no. different. No. Right. So when I read right here, the pizza has a thick braided crust made with honey instead of sugar. Oh my goodness. It's like a dessert. Mm. What, what country am I in? This is like a whole nother world. So if I want to put this in my own words, thick braided, braided means like twisted, like you could braid your hair with honey. Oh my goodness. The crust is sweet in Colorado. So how do I describe that here? In Colorado, the crust is thick, fluffy, and sweet. They add honey. Now, how do I know if I've written enough? I got to, each answer needs to be 30 to 50 words. Who can mm -hmm. tell me how to find the word count? Same as Microsoft Word. This is Google Docs, basically Microsoft Word, but, but better. Highlight what you wrote, go up to tools, word count. How am I doing? Okay, I've got 12 words, 12 words so far. So I, am I done or do I need to describe a little more? No, you have to describe a little more. You got it, you got it. So I'm not it's up done. To, up to 50 words. You got it. What, so 30 I'm really, Exactly, exactly. So you really got to read and think and understand, but that's going to be easier after I put you into breakout rooms. So this is how you would complete the worksheet. But once you're done, let's say I'm done. Once I've completed the entire worksheet, what do I press? Submit. Well, let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, submit or turn in. Then I click turn in. Oh. Very often students will just, can you, I don't know if you, you might, it might be hard to believe, but sometimes students will just open this, not even read the directions and just click turn in and hope the teacher doesn't check. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you did it, but then when the teacher opens and they see nothing, oh, I don't see any writing. I don't, uh, what'd you, what'd you write? <laughs> and then the student says, oh no, teacher, I swear I wrote a lot. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The computer ate my words away. So, so this is. <laughs> So this is the why I wanted to go through Google Classroom. Now, uh, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. And uh, when you, if you see a number, and they're going to be numbered. So in breakout room one, you're going to get New York style pizza. Breakout room two, you're going to get Chicago style pizza. Breakout room three, you'll get Detroit. And breakout room four, uh, you'll get the Colorado Mountain pizza totally different and you're going to read and think about it and discuss it together to make the assignment more fun and interesting okay so I have a question, teacher. Uh, yes, in, uh, in, in our homework we need to do uh, 
all or just one? Oh, all, yes. All? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. So yes, you want to you want to have an understanding of all four. So there we go. Just like we talked about international pizza, one country to the next, there's even in the United States, one place to the next, it's totally different. So it's a nice look into American culture here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put you into four breakout rooms. Here we go. And yes, we're making very good time. Okay, remember breakout room one, New York, two, Chicago, three, Detroit, four, Colorado. Here we go. And you can join your breakout rooms right now. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, you can join.
Okay, everybody. So when I checked in the breakout rooms, everybody seemed to be uh, working hard. And here we go, we have these four regional pizzas, totally different from each other all across the United States. Uh, let's hear from each group about what you learned. Let's start off with uh, Team New York. Tell us a little bit about what you learned. Who wants to begin from <clears throat> Team New York? Okay, teacher. Is um, for me uh, the recipe about the style pizza in New York is mm -hmm. the the secret is like the dough is um, crushed. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and and have topping cheese and sauce, a little bit sauce. For me, it's okay. anything great. different? Anything? Uh, any other different features? Yes, with the Chicago, it's different for the Chicago. So let's give some. Uh, let's uh, let's move to Team Chicago and try to contrast these two. Contrast means how identify how they're different. So they all have cheese and sauce. That's what Faride pointed out. Uh, Team Chicago, tell us how this is quite different from New York. Oh, Chicago, oh, the Chicago pizza, the style is like a deep dish. Mm, correct. So um, it's like a real meal, like a, like a dinner. Uh, mm. Looks like a pie. Yes. Like, like an apple pie, but yeah. the difference is the pizza is salty because the, the layer of the cheese is thick. And um the parmesan in the red sauce tomato tomato sauce mm -hmm. so oh oh then the mozzarella so it's it's really different because it is the pizza you need to eat this pizza with fork yes <laughs> yeah because it's 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 big pizza it's like a, it's bigger than other pizzas exactly so yeah. these are the two distinguishing features. If you look at this, it's thin, like a piece of paper almost. Very flat. Thin. thin and flat, super thin, super thin. flat. Thin and thin. this is deep, like a, like a big, like I love how you said like an apple pie, exactly. And you eat it with a fork. Yeah, and the recipe is in the pan, the pan of, of the same of the cooking the pies. Yes, exactly. It's cooked yeah. in like a cake pan. Exactly. And taste and, 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 and I taste before and mm -hmm. it's really, really good. It's different because mm -hmm. you you feel like a real meal. <laughs> yeah, like it's a, not just like a, a like a it's, it's like a dinner. Like it's really nice because you need to we need to eat with a fork, not with your hand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Part, part of the culture in New York, you grab a slice of pizza while you're walking to the train. It's like a snack you grab and go. Quickly. Yeah. Uh, where in Chicago, you must sit and eat. With yeah, a, it's, it's like more dinner. restaurant. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. more restaurant, like a dinner time, yeah. but it's really good. It's different. Excellent. Team Detroit, tell us what you learned about this. Uh, it's a square that's mm -hmm. different between the Chicago pizza and New York. Exactly. And light, light, airy dot and savory, uh, and the style pie too is a spongy, mm. and uh, is baked in a rectangular pan with a topping pressed directly into the the top, and topped with the olive oil and tomato sauce. Exactly. It's I love how you said rectangular. Rectangular. Uh, you also said spongy. That was another adjective from the article. It is spongy. It does. Spongy. It, it's a spongy texture. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very different from other doughs. Sp uh, spongy. And um, and the sauce goes on top. Mm -hmm. a layer of sauce over the cheese. And oftentimes it's in stripes. Mm -hmm. like lines of sauce over the cheese. Very different from anything you'd see in, here in Boston. All right, excellent. 
and the savory bread and cheese in the perimeter. Oh, who is that? I couldn't hear. Maria. Maria, yes. Tell us more, Maria. Yes, the the bread and cheese in perimeter. Rectangular. Ah, yes, for more for Detroit. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's sure. Michael. You know what? Yeah, I don't know how I get lost. I was out of the class. <laughs> oh, well, welcome back. We're here. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. I was I reading. That's fine. That's fine. Welcome back. <laughs> and I was reading it when I, I was like talking with Faride. And Faride That's was going to answer me like, what is okay. It? <laughs> All right. Now, um, Team Colorado, tell us what you learned about this. Astrid and me, teacher. Um, about Colorado style pizza, uh, is the unique uh, the pie version of a pizza. The customer can create their own pie with uh, different fifty and fifty different toppings, mm -hmm. and the I am um I have a surprise with the information because the the oven is with gas, industrial gas, and the other pizzas is made in a traditional oven mm -hmm. and take 40 minutes. And the Colorado pizza is made in 10 minutes. You're, um, that's at one particular restaurant. Uh, you can certainly do this at home with a, your, an electric oven. But um, that one particular restaurant where this is famous um, in Colorado Springs, I believe, that's, um, that's how they do it. So awesome. yes, that is, a, that is a very interesting detail there yeah. that they use. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the style, the ingredients, the taste? It looks quite different from these other three. Yes, I think the difference is uh, the pizza have honey. Honey, where would they put, where, tell us where they put the honey. Yes, I never in. Well, no, I'm saying, tell us where they put honey. Sorry? On top, on top of the pizza. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, tell me where, where do they put the honey? They put it over here, over the cheese? Oh, is that a topic? No, they don't put the honey over the cheese. They put it on the crust. Oh. So mm -hmm. this. So this is a new vocabulary word. The edge of the pizza is called crust. And in Colorado, they actually put honey around the crust and it's very sweet, almost like, um, like something you'd have for breakfast, like okay. sweet bread. So Colorado, the crust is big, thick and sweet. Yeah. All right, so now, uh, uh, I'm going to stop recording. Well, actually, before I stop recording, we've got, yep, I'm going to, I told you, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, um, what are your, what are, um, well, Isabel said she was really surprised about Colorado pizza. Was anybody else surprised? Any surprises you want to share? No. No surprises. Okay. Me, me too uh, in Colorado. I was surprised. <laughs> the honey. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're very different from each other. So now yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop yes, the recording. Yes, teacher. For me, yeah. it's the, the rectangular style, the pizza in Detroit. Yeah. And the store have cars and the music mm -hmm. for attraction the the visitants. Visitors, very, yes. very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely part of the culture. Excellent. So I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to get everyone working uh, on your own to follow the assignment. So I'm, I'm going to stop the recording right now. Here we go.